viewers and I'm sure you can uh, understand why I'm saying it. This is the kind of brutality she was subjected to. Let's open this up. Dr. Anand Ranganathan needs no introduction. Dr. Vikram Singh, former DGP Uttar Pradesh. Dr. Riju Datta, the national spokesperson of the Trinamool Congress. Professor Monojit Mondol, political analyst. Varun Porohit, leader of the Congress Party. And Siddharth Yadav, spokesperson of the Bharatiya Janata Party, will join us shortly. Dr. Ranganathan, you've tweeted about this. I don't want to get into the political blame game. But imagine what happened to a lady doctor inside the hospital where she was working. Uh, good evening on this exceedingly sad day, I have to say, Pranesh. And good evening to my fellow panelists. I will be very brief because uh, it's a real... Uh, I don't know, I'm lost for words, but I have two points to make here. Number one, uh, the horrendous incident of the rape at that medical college was bad enough. Uh, unknowingly coming across the absolutely blood-curdling, spine-chilling injuries that have been talked about that the lady doctor withstood before she was murdered is bad enough. But to know that the health minister of Bengal, who is also the chief minister of Bengal, has given the principalship of one of the most iconic and celebrated medical colleges of Calcutta, 75-year-old medical college, Calcutta National Medical College. The principalship of that college has been given to the man who was erstwhile principal of this college where the rape took place, where his staff told the family of the victim that it was actually suicide. I don't know what to say. I am just speechless that such a thing can happen. So you can imagine how sold out the media and the journalists are that there is absolutely no outrage that Ms. Banerjee would do such a thing. That's point number one. Point number two, and this is also very important because Pranav, uh, Pranesh know this, that by the time this debate finishes, 51 crimes against women would have been reported all over India. 51, almost a crime a minute. Bengal's rate of crime against women, this is NCRB data, is 71.8, higher than UP and Karnataka. Sooner or later, we must realize this, that while politicking over horrendous crimes against women must end. Yes, the Manipur horror was highlighted by the opposition, and rightly so. But then why is it that the same opposition remained silent when a 35-year-old woman gang raped in Jothwala, then Congress ruled Rajasthan, self-immolated herself in police station because of police inaction. When NSUI General Secretary was arrested for rape after local out outrage exposed police inaction in Kaknir, Congress ruled Chhattisgarh. When the NHRC took Suomoto cognizance after a Dalit woman was gang raped by five men after tying her up her husband in Thanaji in Congress ruled Rajasthan. And the video made viral, but the police did not take action because of elections. When the Calcutta High Court blasted the TMC rule, Bengal government for inaction on multiple gang rape cases and castigated it for not even registering an FIR in 60% of such crimes in post-poll violence. When a 13-year-old was gang raped in Gurdaspur, AAP ruled Punjab and the police did not act for six months and allegedly even allowed the perpetrator to flee the country. There are dozens of such horrendous rape cases where the state and the police did not act or conduct shoddy investigations. Are these horrors any less deserving of our outrage? Are these victims suffering less? Did the Supreme Court take note of any of these horrendous instances? You have to understand the opposition psyche. It outrages selectively and only highlights crimes in BJP ruled states because then you can speak truth to power and criticize Modi. Because only Modi is in power, Didi is not. Look, the sheer brazenness with which the opposition parties ignore crimes against women when they or their alliance partners are to blame is just unbelievable. Remember, Miss Swati Maliwal was slapped on the face multiple times, assaulted on her chest and lower body. All this while Kejriwal was inside the home a few feet away. If a sitting woman BJP MP was assaulted inside a sitting BJP chief minister's house, the United Nations would have been asked to step in by now demanding sanctions against India. But did you see any outrage? No, this is the tragedy. On one, when you have a sitting chief minister give principalship to the person who has been at the center of this entire controversy without investigation being complete. And number two, when the media is 
simply asked to bend and is crawling in Bengal. Dr. Riju Datta, 